giving me this opportunity to address this honorable house. Um, allow me also to congratulate you on your election and your two deputies to be presiding officers for this great house. Uh, Madam Speaker, the first thing I wish to do is to thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for according me this opportunity to serve his people in Kaflafuta constituents as a member of parliament. I also wish to thank my three daughters for standing in instead of their mother, who I lost to cardiac arrest on the 17th of uh, July, 2016. They did a commendable job to, in terms of uh, supporting me and ensuring that um, victory was delivered. I also wish to thank the people of Kaflafuta for making a choice, a choice uh, um, decision to elect me as the member of parliament. I believe that um, their votes did not go to waste. And um, I also wish to thank them for believing in me during the campaign where I, I and my team faced hostility. We campaigned in a very antagonistic uh, atmosphere, but um, through it all, we were courageous. We knew what we were doing and we knew why I had to stand as a member of parliament and the message was delivered with clarity to the electorate. I also wish to thank friends and family who gave me financial support and of course moral support as well. When the going got tough, they were there to support me and to encourage me. I also want to thank those who criticized me. Because their actions actually gave me stamina to fight. It gave me, uh, you know, the strength to, to move on because I knew there was a good cause for, for that. Uh, I wish to give you a better understanding, Madam Speaker, of what Kaflafuta constituents is like. Um, Kaflafuta constituents comprises of two chiefdoms. That is Senior Chief Chuala and Senior, rather Chief Nkambo. Madam Speaker, kindly allow me to state to this honorable house that Kaflafuta is among the richest constituencies in Zambia. Yet Kaflafuta continues to wallow in poverty because some structures in the constituents don't believe that the citizens of Kaflafuta are entitled to share in the wealth that is in Kaflafuta. We have um, a number of companies in Kaflafuta. Uh, that's where, um, Madam Speaker, I should, if you may wish to know, that's where Dangote Industries is. That's where Zambezi Portland is. That's where Neocant Group of Companies is. That is where Handman's Paradise is. That's where Shenzhou, a Chinese company, is best. Um, 
Looking at all these companies that um, I've mentioned, the citizens of Kaflafuta have still have continued living in poverty, even after having all these companies that I've talked about. The people of Kaflafuta have not had chance or given opportunities to work in the said companies. Those that have had the chance to work in these companies have been subjected to slavery conditions of service. Otherwise, most of the people that work in the companies I've talked about reside in town. They are not people who were born and bred or even live in Kaflafuta. The criteria that is used to employ is something that I'm yet to learn. But I'm, I must say that um, it looks quite unfair when these companies came to lobby for operations in the area, they promised the people of Kaflafuta employment and they have not lived up to their promise. And this is one of the reasons why I believed I needed to stand as member of parliament so that I can be able to stand, defend, and protect the interests of the people in Kaflafuta. All the materials that is using to, you know, is used to build Zambia and our neighboring countries all comes from Kaflafuta, yet the infrastructure in Kaflafuta remains so poor. We don't have road infrastructure. We don't have schools. We don't have clinics. Um, we don't have clean water and sanitation. We have lived or we live like there is nothing at all in the constituents. And um, for this reason, Madam Speaker, the people of Kaflafuta saw it fit that they could choose somebody like myself who is going to be courageous and fight and speak for them. And the fact that um, we went through a very turbulent time during campaigns has given me strength and zeal to ensure that I don't fail the people of Kaflafuta. We have already begun to lobby for road infrastructure to be put in place. We've also uh, lobbied for schools and clinics. I didn't have to wait for such a, you know, to wait for a long time to lobby for these structures because I was ready for the job. And um, in conclusion on this um, matter, Madam Speaker, Kaflafuta lacks medical facilities. We have no clinics. People have to travel long distances to access medical uh, facilities. We have no ambulance. Unlike our, uh, our honorable from Masaiti who boasted about the hospital and the other things, in Kaflafuta there is nothing to boast about. So I'm looking forward to coming back to this house, Madam Speaker, with a great testimony of what we shall accomplish in the next five years. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Now, allow me to make my submission or comment on the presidential speech. I read through the presidential speech, Madam Speaker, and I, I think that it's a brilliant piece of work and I believe in our president. I'm very confident that you'll be able to deliver what he has promised, especially 
if those of us that are at constituents level deliver to our constituencies, I think that would be leaving him to fail. If we don't deliver at constituents level and expect him to fix the nation, I think that that's a fallacy, Madam Speaker. So I'm one of those that is looking at putting in everything that I can in sincerity and truth and support every word and every action that our Republican president intends to put into action. I, however, have one or two concerns concerning one piece of um, the speech, and I want to follow up what um, Honorable Stephen Campiongo uh, submitted to this House concerning traditional leaders. He said that we, we need to have them closer to government because they are a key part of our society. I totally agree with him on that part. Traditional leaders are very key in our national development. However, I have noted with sadness that uh, some traditional leaders have not served as they ought to. By that I mean they have not served with the interests of their subjects at heart. We've heard time and time again how traditional leaders have given up land to foreign investors at the expense of their subjects. I'm not against foreign investment. I'm completely for that. But I find it very, very difficult when a traditional leader completely ignores and forgets their responsibility of looking after their subjects and paying more attention to foreign people at the expense of the citizenry. I'm saddened to say that um, we have a trend in the recent years where traditional leaders have shamelessly participated in public politics. Like we just had a few moments ago, uh, a good honorable from Mangango told this house how the chiefs came out to campaign for him and for President Haka in the Hichlema. I find this to be very unfortunate in the sense that when a traditional leader comes out of his or her palace to support one candidate, the fatherly or motherly heart that they are support, role that they are supposed to play in the community is taken away. I feel that if a traditional leader intends to get into active politics, they should come out of the palace and join active politics where they, we can receive punch for punch and not use their office to intimidate the, their subjects just to get what they want. So I, I, I feel that the move by the president to put the chief's affairs under the local government is a brilliant move. It's a move that I think we've needed for a very, very long time to ensure that we have checks and balances for the chiefs as well. We talk about presidents. Presidents need checks and balances. Ministers need checks and balances. And everybody else needs checks, checks and balances. Yet, we have ignored the fact that we have some chiefs who have not ruled their subjects properly, and the current system does not allow for checks and balances, 
on the traditional leaders. And as a result, a lot of people have, have suffered injustices, and not only that, but in the president's speech, the president's desire and wish is to ensure that poverty is eliminated from every Zambian home. But when we take stock of what is going on in some setups, Madam Speaker, it's a sorry sight because the fairness and everything that our president has put to ensure that every, Zambia is, every Zambian is protected we will not work if we do not have structures that will ensure that traditional leaders are put under checks and balances as well. So we, we know it, that separation of power is there so that one doesn't get puffed up with power. But we see this in our traditional leaders, they've been let, let go. They can do whatever they want. They are right in whatever they do and so on and so forth. But without saying a lot of things, we just heard this afternoon a few moments ago that chiefs went out to campaign. How should our society respond to chiefs who go out to campaign for one candidate and decampaign another? I find this to be outrageous, and it's something that um, has to be looked at seriously so that we can provide checks and balances for our tradition leaders as well, because they are human. They will not always get it right. And where they get it wrong, we need to know that they are dealing with human beings. The fact that people are subject does not take away their feelings and the fact that they need fairness in life and to be treated right. So I thank you so much, Madam Speaker, for this rare opportunity that you just accorded to me. Thank you again. Thank you. I recognize the honorable member for Carway Central.